Thank you very much. Welcome, everyone, to Omaha, Nebraska. One team is already in the College World Series Finals. We may have another one tonight, or we may force a game tomorrow. The Omahaws and Ole Miss. The Razorbacks playing very well, peaking perhaps, some might say. Their offense is rolling at 45 and 20. Ole Miss, the last team in, but they haven't lost a game this postseason. Something's going to give in this SEC West showdown tonight as we welcome you to the NCAA Men's College World Series. It's presented by Capital One. Chris, thank you very much. John Gaddis gets the call from Mike Bianco today. Three and one, a 440. They had a couple of directions to go in, but they decided to go with Gaddis. Why? Uh, it must be a left-handed matchup deal right here. And, and for Gaddis, he hadn't started in two months. His last start was April 9th. Um, he's, he's a guy that is a grad transfer. Ultimately, stuff-wise, what you're going to see today is he leans a fair amount of his changeup. And against this lineup that has a bunch of right-handers in it, that's a good thing to do. Capital One batting order, we've mentioned already Stovall, Lanzilli's been terrific. And the first pitch is already on the way, and that one just misses outside. So it's Brayden Webb, then Stovall, Caden Wallace. Games in Omaha have, a lot of them been decided within the first three or four innings. One team tends to get up five, six runs. Haven't seen a big comeback. And the number of games that have been decided by four or fewer, but not large. And Webb hammers this to left, already an issue. It's over the left fielder's head, Graham. I don't think the Sun had anything to do with it, but a hard hit double, Braden Webb, his fifth, and Hogs on base. All right, so let's look at the common denominator of what the Hogs have been able to do when they win ball games here, two so far. It's been the leadoff hitter, it's been the catalyst. In game number one, it was the triple. Game number three, the double to lead off the game, and now another double to lead off this game to put the Hogs already with a runner in scoring position, no out. This is a real good offense that appears to be peaking right now. And here's the hottest hitter that we have in Omaha, Peyton Stovall, the first baseman, hitting 309, eight doubles, six homers, 31 runs yeah, batted in. But it's been nuts here in the World Series. 5-63, nine for 16. And he already has 10 runs batted in. He's got somebody out there on second right now. Hold on. Ahead 0-2, went well with a break pitch up. Yeah, that's the one I was spun looking at something different a minute ago. There's there's five left-handed hitters in this line, right? And for Gaddis, the guy that primarily throws fastball changeup, that's the one he's going to need to have some today is the break of it. Because you, you can't go consistently fastball changeup left on left the entire night. Something's got to move away, and that's not two in a row that did. So when fastball to start, got ahead, slider, slider right here to finish on Stovall, to finish off Stovall, which it's not been something a lot of people have been able to do so far in this College World Series, but that one tailing away first out of the game for the left-handers to strike out. And a big strikeout of Stovall. That plates Gaden Wallace now, the third baseman. He's got four hits here in Omaha, a couple of doubles, and a home run. A part of what has been an electric defense for Arkansas all postseason, really all season, but they too are peaking. That's a web off second with the double. There's Jalen Battles. He's the shortstop. That misses out. Remember, two days after they scored 17, it was Ole Miss that held Arkansas to six hits. Popped up, center fielder Justin Bench. Half the leadoff double. Gattis settles down, gets two quick outs. Okay, so you're, if you're on the bench for Arkansas, you have to look at the pitch counts and see where you are at. Right there, 1-0 pitch, it was a changeup. Something Wallace has to keep in the back burner for next time he comes up. And also all the other righties, Lindsilly and Battles, they have to keep an eye on that 1-0 count. Arkansas let off 
against Auburn with the double, and Webb scored on the Stovall single. They, in fact, have led off the first inning with a hit in all four games. And now Michael Turner, tough guy to get out. And here's that breaking pitch up in the zone, strike one. That's the way Dunhurst catches that breaking ball, too. He just lets the ball come to his glove. He's not going out and getting it, bringing it in. He knows where it's going to end it up, sets the glove there, and ultimately, there's very little movement from him behind the plate. Look at Ian Gonzalez at shortstop. He has struggled so far here in Omaha. Generally a real good fielding shortstop, but a handful of errors. To his right is Garrett Wood, who's playing a lot here late. Peyton Chatagne is at second base, and Elko, star of this team, is at first base. Kevin Graham in left, Justin Bench, Calvin Harris around the outfield. 1-1. One, one. That's right in there. Got two strikes, and it almost looks like Arkansas is not expecting that pitch from Gaddis. The course of the season, he's throwing the breaking ball against right-handers about five percent of the time. It's left-handers eight percent of the time. Already pitching a little differently so far against this Arkansas team. Two outs, two strikes, and another pop-up right field. Harris. And Gaddis is already walking off the field. First time Arkansas has been held scoreless in the first inning in Omaha. After a leadoff double, they don't score. Nothing across for Arkansas, and here comes Ole Miss. 2-0 for the first time in Omaha since 1956. It's a bullpen that allowed their first earned run in 30 days on Monday, and the offense has been clicking. Our Capital One batting order, Bench, Gonzalez, Elko, Kevin Graham. Look at what he's done his last 18 games. They're getting an enormous amount of production from the guy at the bottom, too. Calvin Harris is 5 for 8 in Omaha, 625 from just down the road in Iowa. He had about 60 family and friends here in Alaska, and you got to believe they're all coming back to watch this one, too. And he'll deal with a kid that came out of high school with, again, as much fanfare as any left-handed pitcher in the country, Hagen Smith. But he was a mainstay in this rotation for a lot of the season, but like a lot of freshmen, pitch on the weekend consistently over the course of the year, they get a little bit tired towards the end. So a few weeks ago, took him out of the rotation, put him back in the bullpen. He's pretty fastball heavy, ideally. Let's see if Ole Miss changes that tonight. Usually throw about 70% fastball. But he is back where he's comfortable. It's different for kids that really haven't thrown out of the bullpen in high school to do that when you get to college. Hagen Smith has for the last few weeks now finds himself back in that starting role. He's a freshman. He had a decorated high school career at Ford High School. Seven no hitters as a senior. And a bulldog on the mound. Got to make sure Ole Miss doesn't score. Early in this one it's Bench Gonzalez Elko as he's set to throw his first one. That was a fastball 93 in the outside corner. In and out, that's strike two. Bench 314 on the season, 17 doubles, three homers, good speed. And he's hitting 364 in Omaha, four for 11 with a couple of RBIs. Fouls that one off. See from the ump cam there, it is a little difficult to pick up once the ball hits the shadows. No, nothing new with it. Not only for the hitter, the catcher, but also the umpire behind the plate. Playable for Webb in center field. Bench retired. If you haven't watched all of the Arkansas games, their defense, especially in the infield, is unbelievable. Wallace at third has got a cannon. Battles and Moore up the middle have been impenetrable. Moore last night made a couple of unbelievable plays. One, he ranged to his right, ball kick to his left. He made the play. They'll turn double plays when they have to. And another pop-up and Battles sees this one. And there are two quick outs. If you're Hagen Smith back in this role and, and this Arkansas coaching staff, uh, you really want a quick one, two, three inning. Get him out there, get him back in the environment that he's comfortable, get him, get him back in the dugout. A good start so far, filling up the strike zone and 
Two lazy fly balls to start. He's a guy that doesn't hit many lazy balls at all. Tim Elko, 23 homers, 74 runs batted in on the season. And that gets a piece of the corner on the outside, 95 mile an hour fastball. How about that? A little frisky tonight out there. Average fastball this year for Hagen Smith just to tick over 91. So that's that's pretty good numeral. It's a college World Series. These elements will do it. Yeah, a little rest too. That's a real good pitch underneath the hands of Elko and ahead one and two. All three pitches called against Elko so far have been fastballs in. I missed with the first one, but the last two, they've been trying to crowd him. Shakes on the first sign, likes this one. One, two, he came back inside again. Two balls, two strikes. He has to be careful because if he thinks that he can throw the fastball down the zone by Elko, Elko might let him know he can't. Has to be able to elevate well. Dismissed outside, full count. Hagen Smith, 6'3, 220 pounds. Lefty Graham waits. 3 2. Way outside. He tried to throw him a breaking pitch and a walk. So Elko, who last year played with a torn ACL, and he and his buddies decided, let's do this one more time. Let's run it back. With the goal of obviously getting here and winning a championship, and they are one win away from getting into the finals. Left fielder Graham swings right through one, strike one. Well, unlike Auburn last night, the outfield defense for Arkansas has their backs to the wall. Auburn played real shallow. You look at Lanzilli and Wright, Webb and Gregory, they are backed up. We haven't seen a center fielder play. I mean, he's playing 15 steps deeper than most center fielders have played. But this is exactly the way you're supposed to play with two outs and a red note first. Stay away from the no doubles. Make sure Elko cannot score on any ball hitting the gap. Oh, and two. Breaking pitch popped up, and the center fielder, Webb, comes in to make the play. Only a walk. Each team had a base runner, and they could get no further than first. We're through one. More coverage of the College World Series and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. That is your official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Got a couple of lefties on the mound tonight. John Gaddis and Hagen Smith so far working efficiently. They get the ball, they throw it. Third time in 12 games, we've been a part of a bunch of them this year that neither team scored in the first inning. Lanzilli, a couple of homers here in Omaha, and that one sails high and away. One ball, one strike. Right fielder on the season, 10 bombs, 324 average. Late on that, 88 miles an hour. This one to left, going back is Graham, still going back, looks up for, get it off the top of the wall. Is it a homer? It looked like it got over, and it did. Home run, Chris Lanzilli hit over the yellow line, and the Hogs score first. Lanzilli's third in Omaha. It's 1-0. Look at the way Lanzilli has been able to hit so far in this College World Series. Anything soft, he is able to keep the bat head in the zone long. Watch this, how he keeps it in the zone, just gets it out in front. Always thinking right center. Barrels it by hitting out in front. This ball just takes off. Graham actually broke in and then across. Watch this ball just hit the top, go right over, come right back in. Good call. Oh, no.
field of home run. This play is under further review. This is the one I, I think that, first of all, I like the fact that we have a replay, but on this one, they should just run over and say, it is a home run and go run it back. I mean, there's no reason to look at it. It's clear as day right here. It went over it, short hop the fence behind, and she gone. But it, it shouldn't take. It shouldn't take going and putting headsets on. Just give him the thumbs up. Say it was a home run. Let's go on. Did he just bust out a she gone? She gone. He did. She gone. She, gone. she is. I would take away from that swing too, Lanzilli on a changeup, and that didn't take very long. He is. Um, he is obscenely strong. Yeah. Because he was all the way out in front, fooled on a changeup. Scott Klein. Home run is confirmed. Thank you. This is a crew chief challenge. Ole Miss does not lose a challenge. All right. By the uh, way, love the posture right there. Also, good posture on the call of Scott Klein. Yes, good posture of Scott. I would have liked if he just would have come out and said, "She gone." I saw it. And then <laughs> she gone. Right back over there. <laughs> Now that's a perfect replay review. Good with all the country dancers out there. In right? his country <laughs> night here, she gone would have been appropriate. <laughs> but on a changeup, Lanzilli into the bat, way out in front. That carried. And now Robert Moore, who's been so good, he pops this one up to left center field. Bench saw it. Beach ball falls behind him. And he helped out Kevin Graham there because he looked to bench like, do you see it? Because I don't see it right now. Yeah, Kevin Graham is struggling on anything hit in that vicinity. We saw it yesterday as well. They continue to play in the same spot. They haven't budged any of the left fielders. You see the dead area where they're just crushing the grass. They stand right on top of it. They don't move any to the left or to the right. See the shadows behind them? That's a direct impact. He should actually play more on the left center field side. So it doesn't bother him for anything. Hit to his left. Jalen battles strike one on the swing and a miss. The shortstop, 364 here in Omaha, four for 11, a couple of doubles and an RBI, and he's been awfully impressive with his footwork in the field. 0 oh and two. You can see uh, almost look knucklish when it got to home plate right there. Gaddis throws a changeup, but it kind of holds it like a split, and when he gets through it like that, it takes a ton of spin off that. Prolific offense for Arkansas. They're setting some individual and team records in Omaha. Lanzilli's the first hog player to hit three homers in a single World Series. This one on the ground at third. Staying down on it is Wood across the diamond. And battles retired. Carl John Gaddis, a transfer from Texas A&M Corpus Christi, was a pre-med major with plans to go to medical school. But he had one year remaining, and he thought, you know what? Let's see where I can go. I have dreams of making it to Omaha. Med school can be put on hold, and all of that came to fruition. We'll see if after he's done here what happens with the rest of that medical study. Bounce one there. That's pretty cool. I love that idea. Medical school is an interesting one. I, we have a son going through the application process. It's not as if you graduate and you immediately check into medical school. You, you wait a year plus go through the whole application process. It's arduous. You want to make a detour to Omaha to play the World Series? Seems yeah. Make a lot of sense. Sounds like that's a plan. So John Gaddis got two down after giving up the Lanzilli leadoff home run in the second one nothing Arkansas. Pitches in a walk. See, I always look at these walks, and they always can come back to haunt you. You end up turning over the lineup with two lefties in the bottom of the order. Always wanted Gregory to be the leadoff hitter next inning. That won't happen unless there's a pickoff at first. I agree. After getting more in battles, then you throw four pitches all for balls to a number eight hitter who had two hits. Here at Omaha and batting buck 54. Now Gregory looks at strike one. 
I'm a big numbers guy. What they mean, why players use and wear the numbers. If it's assigned by the head coach on purpose, or if it's something that Gaddis likes, number 27. Mike Bianco, his teammate at LSU, was Pete Bush, first baseman, LSU captain. Sometimes you wonder if there was a relation right there with Bianco. Use the number 27, maybe in a big game right here, symbolic. Wow, that, that you sound like you just planted a trail for Chris Button mm. to kind of go down and see if there's something to the number. That time he did swing. So that was just you thinking out loud there? Wow. Or is there something you know? Little inside, little inside scoop. Okay. I was down there today. Okay. I'm asking questions. Dr. Eddie Perez. Don't need the doctor. Well, one thing that, you know, a lot of his LSU former teammates when they won the national championship here at Rosenblatt, they're watching. They're sending him text messages. They try to stay in touch as much as they can. Two two popped up. Gonzalez. Right here, right here, right here. Speaking of LSU, Michael Papierski, LSU in 2017. Tyler Malone, Oregon State in 18. Jimmy Kerr, Michigan in 19. And that guy, Chris Lanzilli. Three homers in a single World Series since we moved downtown to Charles Swab Field in 11. And there's a lot of eating going on. They're here. racing. Like they're in a race. Nothing wrong with that. I like where we're at right now mentally. I like where we're at physically. Oh. Crowd coming in. The weather has been unbelievable in Omaha. Yep. There is a little weather system coming in tomorrow night, and as a result, if this game goes to Arkansas, tomorrow's game will not be at night. It'll instead be at 4 o'clock local time. Four, Four Eastern. Eastern. Three local. Three. So Two in Denver. Yeah. Five hours less in Hawaii, or are we in the six o'clock window? Yes. Yeah. Ish. Four Eastern, three o'clock local time. If there is a deciding game tomorrow, it'll be on ESPN2. So Ole Miss, Arkansas, college baseball fans, we'll remind you a few more times, but not a night game tomorrow and not your one o'clock Eastern time start. Ole Miss fans are hoping they don't have to worry about that. That's right. Kemp Alderman, this ball hammered to left and high, drifting. Gregory right at the wall. He watches it go over. That's a home run for Alderman. His 11th, and like that, we are tied. Kemp Alderman. He was looking fastball first pitch, and threw him an off-speed pitch first one. Again, gets the fastball in, brings his hands tight to the body, gets it out in front, and the ability of keeping this ball fair is pretty, pretty impressive. That's real good, because that may have been off the plate. I mean, a lot of times a guy gets to that, he's going to hook it foul because you can't get the barrel through it and keep it true. Alderman did hit it a long way. 11th home run of the season, ties it at one. In there, strike one, Peyton Tanier, the second baseman, 245 with a couple of Triples, 11 doubles. He's got 11 homers. This is a veteran team. As Dave Van Horn said, they can beat you in a lot of ways, and they're pitching and hitting here in the postseason. <laughs> there it is. Ball was way in. No, he said. Yeah. Just brought his hands in. There's sometimes guys that lean on one that's middle, middle that goes in, in, on the mound. You're like, yeah. I deserve, that, was, that was not a bad pitch. Right. That's where they were trying to go, and it was just a better swing. The Rebels are seemingly clipping on all cylinders. The only place they're not, the last two in the order have struggled, and so have these guys. Chuck Tanya, one for nine. Peyton Dunhurst after him is 0 for 6, and that's Jalen Battles. That's kind of been automatic, and the ball's hit to him. 
That's all the footwork. Getting the read off the bat. Jalen Battles continues to impress. Anything hit to either side, soft or right at him, he has been able to put himself in a perfect fielding position. We got a little jet stream going out to left tonight, huh? We put it up there. The wind is not hurting it at all. Strike one. They'll take it to the smaller part of the ballpark if you hit it to left tonight. Hagen Smith had Tommy John surgery when he was 16 years old. Early in the 2019 year, and there's another strike. So while sports were shut down, he was rehabbing and recovering. He didn't miss a lot of time. Put on about 30 pounds, got that arm back, and recovered from Tommy John surgery. Picks up the strike out there of Hayden Dunhurst. Tomorrow night, the NBA Draft. It's the 76th annual NBA Draft. 8 Eastern, ESPN, ABC. Magic get the first pick this year. Seems like they could go with Jabari Smith, Paulo Boncaro, or Chet Holmgren. You'll find out during the NBA Draft Thursday, 8 Eastern time, ESPN, ABC, ESPN Radio, and the ESPN app. You could certainly make the case that Jaden Ivey is the most exciting player in that draft. Oh. And having seen Jabari Smith, he's been NBA ready since he was about 11. Saw him a lot this year. Got some seasoning then. Yeah, you got plenty of ambush. I've always wanted to declare myself eligible for the NBA draft. Wow. You know, these guys like, I just think it'd be cool. If you declared yourself eligible? Yeah. You know, guys will say, I'm declaring myself eligible for the NBA draft. Technically, I'm eligible. For you are too. So you want to do it now? I think we just did. You have eligibility left? Yeah. All right. Had a career high seven points on senior night, Creighton Preparatory High School. <laughs> Should have had nine. I got fouled and they didn't call it. That would have made the free throws. <laughs> Most Good. nights didn't take the old warm up off, but <laughs> I don't think it was used accurately. You've been frozen in time. Two two to Garrett Wood. That's high three and two. Wood had a huge Miami regional. He really emerged late. He wasn't playing a ton. Reached four times against Southern Miss in a super. Maybe the most popular guy in the clubhouse. Didn't start a game until the postseason. Justin Bench was on SEC Network the other night after Ole Miss won, and he, he specifically talked about Garrett Wood and just seeing him in the starting lineup and, and the bats that he had had, how that affects his team. We've talked about it plenty. I mean, you see this. Teams that make a run here, a lot of times it's because of someone that hasn't been in the middle of the action the entire year. That would fit for Garrett Wood. He's on right there and he's doing the same the other night. Reached base three times, scored three runs. And to Eddie's point, there you go, Eddie. The number eight hitter with two outs gets walked, so you're going to deal with the nine, which flips the lineup over. But in this case, Calvin Harris has been terrific, the right fielder. And Wood, because of the lack of playing time, has not had a stolen base attempt the entire season. Shouldn't expect one now either. Calvin Harris, five for eight. Two doubles, four RBIs. He's hitting 476 in the postseason, 625 in Omaha. And they've seen Harris do damage. He homered against Arkansas in what was then game eight. This is what can get Hagen Smith in trouble coming into this game. That's why Matt Hobbs coming running out right now. The pitcher coach for Arkansas. 42 wide walks 
in 72 and a third coming in. He didn't give up a ton of hits, but a lot of times creates his own traffic. One of the best pitching coaches in the country right there, Matt Hobbs, fourth season. Speaking of coaches, back at Bullard High, Robert Ellis was the head coach of Hagen Smith. Robert Ellis. I played with Robert Ellis. Did you? He also had Grayson Rodriguez, who was the 11th overall pick in 2018 of the Orioles. And he was asked once Smith committed. He said, Smith is better than Rodriguez just because he's a better athlete, a better mover. He reminds him, he said, of a crochet kid from Tennessee. <laughs> That's a pretty good yeah. compliment. The way it works in college baseball, too, it's the bench, Hobbs, who calls the pitches. So it's not as if they were shaking things off and saying, I'd rather do it my way. And he went out and said, throw a fastball. Signals come from Hobbs. And he's just now backed up the meeting with two quick strikes. Michael Turner's got a lot of freedom, too. He's, and if he sees something, there's interaction back and forth because nobody sees the hitter's feet and reaction better than a catcher does. That should be the throw over the first. Little flick of the thumb. The universal pick sign. Uh -huh. I don't know. He just threw two strikes in a row. I'm surprised mm. that they would throw over like that. Yeah. You really do not want a real miss. Calvin Harris leading off next in. Chase there and a good meeting from Hans after that three strikes. Prior to that, the Alderman, the designated hitter, got into one into left field. We've had two home runs tonight, one by each team. We're tied at one through two at the World Series. Scoot in close. That's what Jack Payne requested from us for 37 years as the voice of the College World Series. Payne's baritone was the soundtrack of Rosenblatt Stadium. Hurry back to the College World Series. Come on back to Omaha. So today, take a moment to remember Jack Payne, the voice that will never be silenced. All right, so if you ever played in this thing, at Rosenblatt, he said your name. And growing up in his town, that, that was what you want. Like, I just wanted Jack Payne to say my name, because if he said your name, that, that meant you were playing in a College World Series. And he said hey, a lot of names, man. I got to know Jack really well. And, it's uh, it's a voice that forever was synonymous with this tournament. Said your name too. It's pretty cool. As soon as he Quite spoke right there. Yeah, you knew right away. Didn't yeah. You? yeah. Brayden Webb retired. And you started to have those feelings of I want Jack Webb. I want him to say my name, Payne. Because you were going to the games as a kid. Like you heard that voice for a long time. Oh yeah. I mean we used to emulate it <laughs> in high school when we were screwing around on the bench, the right. way that he would he would announce everybody at the beginning of the game the same way. And you heard, I mean, Bonds and Clemens and McDowell, Ventura, some kid named Perez at Florida State. Like that, that that's what you heard from that voice. Stovall is over for two tonight. And that scoot together that Ryan was talking about, it, it was for everybody out in the bleachers because there was there was no seats like there is. Yeah, it was just bleachers. Tighten so, it up out there. We're gonna get some more people in. When the line was 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 still going and the game had started, the GA line was still outside. Jack could politely ask everybody, just get to know your neighbor, move a little bit closer together so they could squeeze a few more in. Strike one to Caden Wallace. John Gaddis gave up the home run to Lanzilli to lead off the second and a double to lead off the first. But for the most part, really clean. Tough pitch called strike two on the outside corner or just outside. That will help you. This is where it's really tough to see right now for everyone. Now that changeup does come out of his hand like a knuckleball. The 
One and two through Umcam. That's outside. That's Jake Ulahop who is wearing the Umcam tonight. We are thankful to that. A lot of folks love watching baseball game through Umcam. Tell me if you see it. Saw it, and I saw one get ripped into left field. That's going to be a hit with two down for Caden Wallace. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oklahoma a winner today. Earlier sending Jim Schlossnagel and AM home. Sooners. Thank you. Stay with me, Trying to do what hasn't been done in a long time. 1994, we've already heard about the Bucky Buckles. And also had Russ Ortiz and Ryan Miner on that club. Russ Ortiz here. He's here. Yeah, I saw him downstairs. I would bet a few of those guys come moseying back up for the finals. Tell you what, right now, do not be surprised if you see Caden Wallace. Try to take off 1 0. He's been going off off speed against the hitters on fastball. One four to the plate. He changes his times also in the looks. Misses to Michael Turner, the catcher. The transfer who came in here, and there was all sorts of noise around Turner, and he had to deal with some social media pushback. He's a terrific kid, great player. And as you guys both said, a lot of responsibility on the catcher for Arkansas. Well, they were spoiled. I mean, they had Casey Opitz the last few years, and Casey Opitz could. I mean, he, he could he could run a pitching staff he could run a game and, and for Dave Van Horn there was just less things he had to worry about then you get a veteran to come in and transfer like Turner and hard to replace him but it makes it a little easier yeah running back and there to make the play is Justin Bench Turner is retired they will strand one bottom of the three Ole Miss coming up with a win they move to the finals Welcome back to Omaha, tied at one in the bottom of the third. You're in this league long enough, and you make some friends on some other teams. And there has been a relationship between Tanner Allen and Tim Elko. Allen, who's played for Mississippi State, tweeting, great player, unbelievable person, always pulling for him. You guys, young guys, be like Tim Elko, does it the right way, back on March 3rd, 2022. <laughs> if I had a son, I'd want a role model to be Tim Elko. I respect the way you and the rest of your team has handled the critics all year long and still found your way to Omaha. Best of luck in talking with Elko about this. He said, you know what? The best thing was that my mom and dad saw it because they wanted to raise me to be the right kind of guy. And this was proof that someone else on another team who was so well respected thought that way about me. Tanner actually called him up, left him a message after Super Regionals. Basically, go get it. This one's all yours. Yeah, and Tanner Allen's not the only one who feels that way about this. This player, Tim Elko, has dealt with a lot of adversity. This was a team, again, that was really struggling, and all of a sudden found their way into the field as one of the last teams in, and they haven't lost a postseason game. But without Elko, they're, they're not going anywhere. It's a different looking lineup, that's for sure. I mean, you get Bench Elko Graham. 1 3 4 in this lineup. It all could have signed. I think it was once Elko said, I'm, I'm going to come back. Everybody else said, you know what? Maybe I want to do that, too. This might be kind of fun. Let's run this thing back. And they've run it all the way back to this point. Three balls, no strikes. That's like putting off medical school. Let's just put off leaving here for one more year. Oxford, Mississippi. And there, that, that is, crowd. there is kind of fun to play. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So they were all trying to call time. Never Yet mind. There's a beach ball straight away set on field by the timer. And they're like, as soon as it was a ball, they just lowered their hands. No, nope, we're good. That second pitch, Smith thought yep. it was a strike. That slider, the body language said it all. I was wondering and wanted to see what his reaction and how that next pitch, that third pitch, was going to be. Hasn't been able to regroup from it. Let's see. I think Arkansas gets somebody going right now. 
because you if if it starts misfiring fastballs right here you, you can't wait too long before you go down that bullpen. Really good two hole hitter Gonzalez he's got a terrific eye at the plate great plate discipline and that one sails high one ball no strikes the freshman who at one point had thrown 15 pitches and 14 were strikes starting to lose the strike zone a little bit time to start throwing over a couple times and let the bullpen get as loose as they can right now. Two balls no strikes that's six in a row. Right now the animal section of Florida State be yelling seven in a row seven in a row. How about this Zach Morris up the throw. We've got to start in Arkansas second game here. Have to that one didn't go great. And now they're going to give him a chance to. Start to loosen up. This is interesting because it's going to take him a little bit longer because he's been a starter. Oh, he's actually a reliever. Oh, he's been a reliever. He's been yeah, a reliever. That a game that and you know he came in as a starting role, so he would be coming in off the bullpen how he is used to. He lasted two thirds against Ole Miss. He only threw 25 pitches in that game. And Gonzalez is on the plate. Popping that bat 17 homers 50 runs batted in and he runs well for stolen bases. Popped out from the shortstop his first time up. Elko dangerous hitter on deck. Hagan Smith wants a ground ball. Let this infield do its work. And that's going to go to the seats. Rebels were 7 and 14 after the Arkansas series. They went on a 14 3 run. They've kept it going. This was actually the first game they've trailed. And Omaha now have tied it at one on a homer, trying to get ahead here in the bottom half. Gonzalez is gone. He strikes him out. Big strikeout for Hagen Smith. Got it back on the rails pretty quick right there. So first six pitches of this inning were balls. And he goes fastball away, works his way back to a two strikeout, then buries a really good slide. Gonzalez is out in front on. Lead off walk. You get Gonzalez up and a plus count. Hagen Smith comes all the way back to strike him out. That's the 30th strikeout of the season for Gonzalez. 48 walks you think 2 0 count starts off advantage Gonzalez just tells you how nasty Smith can be on the mound. And now Elko. He hit one of the loudest and longest home runs here at Omaha. There's a moonshot to left and nearly got up to the concourse. One. When Elko originally hurt his knee, James Andrews' daughter, who ended up going to Ole Miss, they consulted with a bunch of orthopedic guys, including Andrews, and they said, look, if there's not a ton of pain associated with it, he can play. And he did play. And he homered when he played with the ACL. His first game back. And Mike Bianco talked about the process, and he said right away, you saw him. It didn't look like he was he was going to come back. Like and then it's the not going to work. Yeah. Better. Next week a little bit better. Next thing you know he's taking swings. The ball's jumping off the bat again. This guy's been good for college baseball, man, and unbelievable for the growth of the game at Oxford. 0-2 chases there. How about Smith? How about that pitch? Slider's been pretty big for Hagen Smith tonight, and, and that slider is one that shows you some things that are a little bit better than what we see in the big league. So down and away right there, down and away to Dunhurst. It's the same pitch he struck out Gonzalez with. 
Don't go swung right over the top. So 2,600 RPMs, more than you'll see at the major league average. Velocity wise, about what you're used to, but more drop, more horizontal. Combine those things, it's going down and away from a left-hander more than they are used to, and they have not made an adjustment tonight. And he paints there, too. I mean, that's one of the things that his high school coach talked about. You kind of push him back into a corner, and he'll fight his way out of it. Lead-off walk, back-to-back punch-outs. So here Hobbs and Van Horn, you've got your guy Morris up in the bullpen. You go back to back strikeouts. Is that changing the way you're thinking here? Oh, yeah. Right? Stuff's not the issue. That's for sure. It's, it's just the ability to throw that stuff in the zone. He's walked three, won in every inning so far. The only hit he's given up was a home run. Not close there with that swing from Kevin Graham. He's got that one dialed in. That one's perfect. As a hitter, you can't recognize speed, uh, spin. See it, you commit to it a little too early. Wind gusting a little bit in from center field. On the one two. Two and two shook the first. We're going to get a slider here. Yes, we do. After the leadoff walk to bench, he punches out Gonzalez, Elko, and Graham. The fastball. Couldn't quite find it to start this inning for Hagen Smith, but he found that one. How about slider, slider, slider? Punch out, punch out, punch out. That's five in the game for the freshman left-hander, and it keeps his game all tied up at one. We're back top of the fourth of a 1-1 game. And the first pitch in there for strike one. Chris Lanzilli already with one home run. He's one for one. He's got three home runs at the College World Series. Mm. That was a home run swing. Really love the approach. The fastball he tries to stay middle the other way. If they throw him anything soft, that's when he pulls. Major League level, you see a lot of Paul Goldschmidt doing something like that. Fastballs the other way. 0 oh, 2, Gaddis, look out. Because these two teams are playing and will decide who meets Oklahoma, we'll have an SEC team in the College World Series final, 13 time and 14 seasons. As Gaddis fields and fires to first for the out. Get eight teams get here A and M Texas Stanford two teams that are on the field Oklahoma has advanced Notre Dame and Auburn. Play a double elimination format the event's been squeezed a little bit. World Series final starts Saturday Sunday then Monday the Sunday game is an afternoon game so game two of the College World Series finals an afternoon game and that first pitch sails high. Golfers tan right there, babe. Try, trying to try to darken up the top half. Trying to even out <laughs> right now. It can take a little bit longer than one night. They get a Marcelo Ozuna sleeve there to cover up the part that is just <laughs> scalded. And then that just would be sent to the top. <laughs> I'm him right now. Take the shirt off and Tim us. I think the nation had enough of the Timster last night. <laughs> Tim us. Tim has become a bird. <laughs> <It is. laughs> There we go. That's a hog. I spent some time with him. Yeah, that was your buddy from That's left field, boy. wasn't it? That's my boy right there. Yeah. From left field. I hope those things were free. Yeah.
So you had a chance to talk with him? Yeah, sat down with him. Is he wearing those? Had a nice little soft drink with him as well. He was wearing those. Yes, he was. He actually had a tan light on the top of his head. Tough play, but a great play. Jacob Gonzalez. And we may take a look at this one, but what an effort from Gonzalez to fire to first. And a call on the field is out. Uh, it comes around it. Let's it go in hurry. He knows he's down the line. Hard to tell from this angle. That is a quick transfer right there. He knew he had to get rid of it. Nice save. Watch Bobby where he Warner steps on the bag. Safe. That's fundamentally way. sound. Right in the front. Who's safe? I don't know. That's I'm not sure. Does he, he hit the base? That's uh, what I, I don't think. He does. I'm not sure he hit the base based on the way his foot kind of broke no, no. when it hit the ground. I don't think he hit the base, Eddie. Neither do I. He did, he did when his toe came through, but I don't think he hit it on the front side. All right. <laughs> What'd you just say? The last thing you said? I have no idea. And at home, do not <laughs> rewind the TV. Just don't do it. I, so they're, they're I, showing that replay to everybody in the stands, and, and when you take the look from center field... He didn't get there. You... You can tell that a foot comes down before the ball gets there, but you can't you can't see that he didn't hit first base. He didn't get there. No, I don't think he got there at all. He got there when he drug his toe all the way through, but that was too late. And I, I think there's a reason that he drug his toe. Hundred percent. He's not going to do that otherwise. He got another inch and a half, and he's safe. Gattis will throw some more. Moore, who is as sharp a baseball IQ as anybody. His dad, of course, is the president of baseball operations for the Kansas City Royals. What do you think he thinks? Do you think he knows he didn't get the bag, or yeah. do you think you do think he knows that? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think he. I think he knew the minute that it happened because that's why he drug his foot yeah. back behind. Him. Yeah. Call on the field was out. Let's see. The call on the field is confirmed. Arkansas will be charged with one challenge. And for all the accolades and plaudits we've given to the defense for Arkansas, that was a heck of a play by Jacob Gonzalez. It really was, and it was a quick release, and he knew exactly who was running as well. Change up high and away to Jalen Battles. The shortstop rounded up. Third base, his first time up. Both of these starters are getting it and going with it. And pitch clock here, but Gaddis is throwing with about 13, 14 left on the pitch clock at the 22nd clock. You can unplug that thing while there's nobody on base. There's no reason with Gaddis. Two swing throughs on a slider down and in. I don't know why you change it. One two to battles. That's outside. Two balls, two strikes. Gaddis, a one, two, three inning. First one he's had. Mike Bianco's going to be pleased with the way his pitcher is performing tonight. A win away from a World Series final. Welcome back. The NCAA Men's College World Series presented by Capital One. Join now with Mike Bianco. What have you seen out of Gaddis early dawn? Just a uh, you know, terrific mix of three pitches, in which we, we hope for. You know, similar to what Elliott did, I think, a couple days ago. Uh, maybe a little more off speed, more changeups and, and sliders. But I thought his slider has been really good. It's a pitch he picked up later in the season. When you look at what your team has done in the postseason to go on the road time after time and be undefeated, what's impressed you most about them? Just, you know, how resilient they've been and how tough they've been, especially where they came from, right? Uh, I think everybody knows our story now, uh, but this hasn't been an easy road, and you know it doesn't get any easier. You come to the World Series and you have to play the SEC West, so you know they've hung in there. Good deal. I appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Mike Bianco, one of the longest tenured coaches in the SEC. 
the season got so bumpy, there were reports out there that it may very well be his last season there. He's been there so long, program has been real solid. And all of a sudden, team right in the ship. Look what they've done their last 18 games. They've lost only three of them. Their runs per game has been pretty consistent. It's really about the pitching and, in particular, the bullpen. First pitch swinging, and that's a good start. And Alderman is aboard. He's two for two, a home run, and now a single. Pretty good start for Kemp Alderman today. Mike, I mean, he got this job in the middle of 2000. He's been 22 years. Ole Miss has been consistently in the postseason every time. But they'd only been here once, and, and the Mississippi State won it last year. Then it could kind of hear everything starting to go. But man, the consistency that he's brought to this program, it never existed before. I think that's what gets forgotten sometimes among fan bases is how much good he has done and how often they have been a 40 win club. Now they get a chance to do something this program's never done, and that's win a national championship. Peyton shots on Yay, the second baseman. Come on, Peyton, come on, little He struggled here in Omaha, runner on first, third baseman, Caden Wallace, about even with the bag. That is just foul. And Chatney's got that pull right side of the infield if he wants to push on it right now because you get the, the freshman Smith is going to fall towards third base when he lets it go. And, and Robert Moore is playing shallow center field at this point. If you just get it past Smith, Chatney is going to be safe at first. We'll miss it. Have guys on first and second, nobody out. Absolutely. Now you're not going to do it now with 02, but earlier it was it was almost an invitation to do it. It's a no brainer earlier. So we know how he struck out the side after the walk in the third inning. It was a slider, right? This is the time to go right back to it. Can't try to overthrow it. Might just throw it in the dirt. Runner would then get the second. But he's got a lot of swings and misses from it. Left that one up and he fouls it off. More like a change up than that, that slider. I, I, I like slider here because slider is his best off speed pitch. The, yeah. the way that's the one that he's really got going. He struck Gonzalez, Elko, Graham out. It was all on sliders. There, it is. there it is. Yep. Sixth punch out for Hagen Smith. That's just nasty. It comes in appearing like a strike right there, and then all of a sudden, it just disappears. What's that feeling like as a right-handed hitter? When you start to swing at it, and about midway through, you realize what's happening, that you, you just you can't get to it. You can't get to it. And again, that's pitch design. That's what that pitch is supposed to do. Be thrown as a ball, not as a strike. And now the catcher, Hayden Dunhurst, who has navigated this staff in this bullpen you're catching Dylan Delucia and Hunter Elliott it's a pretty good spot to be in and he's the guy that's been responsible for it offensively trying to get on track 0 for 7 Blocked there by Turner. The last six outs that Arkansas has recorded have been Hagen Smith strikeouts. He had two walks and a single sprinkled in there, but he's found the slider, that's for sure. Now he's just got to get into counts that he can use it more. He's been slider heavy against Dunhurst here. First one for a strike, last two out of the zone. Little different ball game here in the World Series. This has been the High scoring series and lopsided games. Not tonight as Smith has been matched by Gaddis. 1 1 each team with a home run. 
Ole Miss wins. They move to the World Series Finals. Best two out of three against Oklahoma. If not, we'll play again tomorrow afternoon. That's in there for a strike. Dunhurst is struck out again. He's 0 for 8. He's got two strikeouts tonight. And after Kemp Alderman got the base hit on the fastball, it's been all about that pitch. Every strikeout's been yeah. swinging and the Bit slider. I think yeah. every one of them has been so far. Hagan Smith got the start game one of the Stillwater Regional and it was a rough outing with one and a third, four walks, two earned runs. When they knew they had to play two days later, DVH texted his pitchers and said, I need to know who's got anything left. Hagan Smith was the first person to text back, says, arm feels awesome, I want the ball. He ended up giving him two shutout innings, four strikeouts. Yeah, any situation, he said. He's not afraid. I mean, no. it, it doesn't mean he's going to go out and have success every time, but he's he's definitely not going out there trying to miss every bat either. He's, he'll throw it across the zone. He's he's not going to pitch away and try to miss bats. But man, when he's gotten two strike counts today, that slider's not electric. Well, after the walk in the top of the third, Hobbs came out. They immediately got. Zach Morris up in the bullpen. Since then, he's struck out five. I don't. I don't know why he's still throwing. Um, I mean, he should be eight to ten away anyway. Right now, Zach Morris is throwing his loose. complete game down there. Yeah, he was loose last inning. One ball, one strike. Wood walked his first time up. That pitch sails away. Two balls and a strike. Ole okay. Miss, by the way, just 251 against lefties. They came in 294 against righties. Usually Arkansas with two outs, runner at first. They've been playing deep every time. Well, Woods at the plate. This time they decided to play normal, even shallow in center field. Not respecting the power of Wood. Two two. We've seen what's worked with two strikes for Hagen Smith. No surprise if it's the slider right now once again. He did, man. He has been dynamite with that pitch. Picks up another strikeout. That is his eighth. Come to the plate, you can expect going back with a bat in your hand. He's been outstanding. Welcome back, everyone. Some of the images from tonight. Lanzilli lift off to left. Put the hogs up one zip on the top of the second. Matched with a home run from Kemp Alderman, who's two for two tonight. And then the pitchers kind of dialed it in. Kind of. We've seen Gaddis. The guy that has been unbelievable here is Smith. Eight strikeouts. The last eight outs have been via his strikeouts. There's a good graphic, just kind of sums it all up for you. Oklahoma beat A&M today on the left side of the bracket, so they advance. And one thing we've learned, if in fact you lose the first game, we've made it quite clear how hard it is to get out of that bracket. But the advantage of going 2-0 goes away. If the 2-1 team forces another one. Center field carrying yard work. Oh man, the first one we have seen out of Charles Schwab field to center off the bat of Calvin Harris. Stay hot. Check that, check that. Brady Slavens, Brady Slavens. I'll tell you this, this is the sixth home run in this ballpark that's been hit straight away center field. And Brady Slavens got all of that one. They move him to the eight hole from the two spot. Fastball straight down the middle. My man barreled it. And we're talking about the wind blowing in. It did not matter. No. 
I don't think I've seen a center fielder's no. number yet. Like, let alone a ball go out. I don't think I've seen a center fielder turn their back and run the way the bench did right there. When he did, you knew that ball was pretty well hit. I didn't know it was quite... It was, it was hit quite that well, but... 16th home run of the year for Slavens, and the Hawks have the lead again. 427 feet for Brady Slavens, and now Zach Gregory, and he pops this one up. Hard time seeing it. Graham now picks it up, but it goes into the seats. One more time on Slavens. This was a blast. Look at that right there. 107.5 miles per hour off the bat. The launch angle perfect at 24 degrees of distance 428 and a 2-1 lead <laughs> called strike three ball dropped then the tag applied before he hit that home run the point was if Arkansas could win this game the 2-0 advantage disappears and the team that forces the bracket final at a 2-1 has won more than half of the bracket championship tie-breaking game. So Arkansas will immediately move into the driver's seat if they can force that game tomorrow. Well, and I'd tell you who uh, I wouldn't publicly say it, but who's a big Arkansas fan tonight's the Oklahoma Sooners. For sure. Because you get another one tomorrow, and what you're probably going to get is Connor Nolan for Arkansas and Dylan DeLucia for Ole Miss. So you're going ace-ace, which mm -hmm. means they're probably not going to pitch much in the finals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dave Van Horn told me before the game that today Connor Nolan not available. The hope is that there is an extra day to be played that he would get the ball. And he would be going on major league rest Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. He'd be on four days right. for Nolan to come back tomorrow. Difference is those 79 pitches that he threw. None of them were really high stress pitches. Had a nice lead from the get go. Two one to Webb, two and two. As a pitcher, when somebody says it's not high stress pitch, is that, is there such thing as a non? Probably not as much max effort. I mean, probably take a little bit off of it. Yeah. Not only that, the mental, the mental part of the grind of it. Yeah, that's fair. Sure, I'll grant you that. That was a big Kurt Schilling-ism. Not every pitch is created equal. Or pitcher. Yeah, that's, that's fact too. Yeah. <laughs> that is fair. I like when I say things, I look at KP quickly to see I if he did. has a tell or not. <laughs> 3 2, that's down, ball four. Bobby Warren is the first base coach for Arkansas, played for Dave Van Horn. He is the most enthusiastic first base coach when guys get down there. Every time okay. there's something that's immediately looking in. Reminder, now we're going to look at the outfielders in a minute. He's going to tell them where they are, but he is uh, hes a one-man greeting committee when you get down there. 427-foot home run from Brady Slavens, the eight-hole hitter, the designated hitter. First ball we've seen hit over the wall in center field this season. And to Eddie's point, that wind is blowing straight in. Yeah, that was, uh, that was hit pretty true. Peyton Stovall's been kept in check tonight. A strikeout and a ground out to short. Starting to get a little activity in the old Miss bullpen. Jack Doherty warming. 2 0. Gets the corner, two balls and a strike.
Mm. Could have called a balk there. Yeah, he, could have. he just rolled right through his set. And I think they were worried about Webb potentially running. Didn't pick there, but wasn't a whole lot of pause coming down. Stays alive. So initially 427 feet. Jeremy Mills, one of our great researchers, says at 436 feet. So they adjusted it. 436 feet, the longest World Series home run at this stadium. Alonzo's was 429 feet. How about that? Run him here. I do not. Doesn't look like he's getting good read from him. Got one out. We got Wallace on deck. For as hot as Stovall was, he's down for the third time tonight and second time via the strikeout. That's what I thought. It's a, a split or the change. I mean, an act is a true split. It actually acts a little bit more as a changeup. Takes more velocity off. It doesn't have a ton of sink, but that one it was the velocity difference. It had Stovall all the way out in front. He's now punched out twice. I'm white. Four strikeouts in the game for Gaddis. Caden Wallace on the ground. Good hop and the flip to second, and they will get the out. We'll talk to Dave Van Horn about that moonshot. Brady Slavin said longest at Charles Schwab. Welcome back to the NCAA Men's College World Series presented by Capital One, joined by Dave Van Horn. Hagen Smith, eight strikeouts. What's been working for him so far? Slider's been really good. You know, he, he, lose, he lost command twice, and he bounced back. I mean, that's kind of what he does. He kind of got his own jam, got out of it, and uh, been working that slider pretty good, throwing a lot of strikes. You survived one elimination game. What was the message before you guys came out today? Pretty much the same thing as yesterday. You know, play loose, have fun. Uh, let's just let's see what can happen if we just do what we do and that's compete every pitch and every man up in that pen. Appreciate it. Thank you coach. Okay, thank you. Rev, you know what really good coaches do? They give the home run sign. <laughs> and he's given it twice today. That's been the key. Dave Van Horn has given two home run signs today. They didn't miss a sign and that's the difference. You know, really good play-by-play -play people do. They flip their score sheet over and don't, don't get into a story so that when you look down and you see Harris's name, you're like, no, that didn't flip it. You think Calvin knows he already has one tonight? Congrats, Calvin. <laughs> Little did you know, you get the longest home run ever here. He will start it, and he has been terrific out of the nine spot. But Hagen Smith's on some kind of heater right now. He has struck out eight, and the last outs have all been Smith strikeouts. Not this one on the ground. How about Robert Moore dropping to a knee, making sure it gets nowhere but in his glove. The lower you get to the angle, the better it'll be to see the bounce. Commits early, maybe a little too early, got lucky there. Tell you what, though, he has great hands. And that plays. The clock that he and Battles have to just knowing when you got to turn one loose, when you don't have to turn one loose, when you potentially can turn a double player, when you can't, it's it is next level for both of them. Mm. Change up there. Hey, I haven't seen too many of those, but that one had bench all the way out. Fastball followed by the change up. Let's see if you go slider and pick up punch out number nine. Nope, keep. Yeah, that's just to speed it up a little bit. But he's going to go to it. He knows that's his bread and butter. He shook off when Garrett Wood was at the plate last time on a 2 2. One slider, here it is. Didn't bury that one, stayed up. 
only issue with that slider, and it's it's got him a few times this year. Higgins Smith's hit nine guys. Every once in a while, it's just you're trying to back foot a slider, and you actually, you actually do back foot a slider to where they stay in there and eclipse them. One ball, two strikes. Second highest prospect as far as draft goes of guys not currently eligible behind Peyton Stovall. Hagan Smith's eligibility was starting 2024. One, two, and he missed again a little high, so he's able to spoil it. Time to get elevate again. Give him something different. This one to left. Gregory trying to block that sun, and he's there to make the play. Did Hagen Smith say something into his glove before that pitch? Did you see him go to his glove? Did he? <laughs> Looked that way. I mean, that's a good thing. When you're talking to yourself, you start answering yourself, then you may have to think twice about it. It's lonely out there, man. A little walk around the mound after a ball to Jacob oh, yeah, Gonzalez. He grounded out to short or popped out to short and then a strikeout. 81st pitch. It's been a strike all night. One ball, one strike. Michael Turner helped him out behind home plate, too. He got above that as he was catching it, brought it back down into the zone. Three balls in the strike. You got a number you think that they have Van Horn and Hobbs coming in for the number of pitches we're kind of thinking that we'll let Smith go. Or is it totally off what he's doing yeah, on the mound? I, I'm sure there's a max, but I think up until that max, it's it's just eye test. And the eye test still tells you that everything's pretty good. So we've seen Morris, and now they've moved to 39. That's Evan Taylor. This worked the last time, so we'll see what Hobbs is going to say to Smith to allow Taylor to throw some more pitches as well. Must win game for Arkansas. They want to force a game tomorrow during the afternoon here in Omaha with the trip to the College World Series finals online against Oklahoma. The Sooners today with a win, never really in doubt. They got a three run home run of the first inning from Jimmy Crooks and then David Sandlin was outstanding in seven innings. He struck out a dozen. Sooners move to three and oh and right into the College World Series finals. May be the biggest spot of the game for Smith now with Tim Elko and a runner on first. Started them off that way last time. Same result, too. A swing and a miss. First time he faced Elko, he was 94 95. The second time he was 90 91. That one was 88 miles per hour. Outfield playing very deep. With two outs and a runner at first once again. Close pitch instead of 0-2 though 1-1. The infield shifts. They move more to the shortstop side of second base. Set up in. It is 
glove, but the location was off the plate. Two balls and a strike. There is a very distinct difference in stuff now. Mm -hmm. The first time that he faced up. I don't give in here three one. You know you're up one right now. I'll go the go ahead run at the plate. You do have Graham. Very respected in the fourth spot. You got that slider. This is the time to go to it. Hitters count three one. <laughs> they went after him. Wow. That's living a little dangerously with this guy, huh? I agree. We had a conversation a couple weeks ago in Anaheim with Mike Trout when he was mic'd, and he said he missed his pitch. He knew it. He may have. Was that Elko's pitch? We're gonna try it again. Right field. Looks like the park will hold it. And on the warning track, Lanzilli is there. Hagen Smith gets through the fifth. It's 2 1, Hogs. Omaha, Nebraska, the College World Series. Arkansas needs a win. They got a lead 2 1. We go to the sixth inning. John Gaddis is now out of the game. Five innings, a couple of earned runs, four Ks through 81 pitches. He also has currently given up the longest home run in the history of the ballpark to Brady Slavens. On the mound, the Oregon State transfer, Jack Washburn, Jr., out of Webster, Wisconsin. Man, I could not hit his dad. I'll tell you that left-handed hitter, uh, left-handed pitcher, son of Jared Washburn, five and two on the season. See how many innings he's pitched: 38 and the third. The hits: 31. Strikeout to walk ratio. But there is Jared. Talk about a World Series champ with the Anaheim Angels back then. Teammate of mine, yep. in Seattle. We were talking yesterday about the 88, 90 mile per hour fastball that sometimes you wondered why you couldn't hit up in the zone. It was Jared Washburn's fastball that you once struggled against up in the zone because of that spin stayed rate. There. Yeah, it stayed there. It'll be Michael Turner, Lancilli, and Moore. Arkansas will try to add to its lead. They're the visiting team tonight. And the first pitch, a little cut piece to it. 93 miles an hour, strike one. Same number as the old man, too, 56. I'm sure that's just random. Yeah, that's just random. <laughs> Knowing Chris, she's on. She's on the. She's on the path to find out as well. Ahead, 0-2 to Turner. Got him swinging three pitches and a strikeout for Jack Washburn. Simple right there. Grab that four seamer. There's that one you were talking about. That's the one that pops through. Grab the four seamer, throw it to the top of the zone. There it is. Hmm. Four pitches, four strikes. Lanzilli, a big home run in the second inning. Back to the pitcher a second time up. Gets the call. It's been a generous strike zone tonight for Ulenhop behind the plate. Both pitchers. And now 0 2. Jared Washburn pitched 12 years in the major leagues. He's 
Six foot two, 211 pounder. A little giddy up there at 95. It was a lot harder than Daddy did. <laughs> Daddy's got a ring. One ball, two strike pitch. Mm, that is filthy. A wipeout breaking pitch. Strikeout number two for Washburn. It's pretty loud stuff coming out of the bullpen now. 4.95. Fastballs dancing around a little bit, and then he uh, then he throws that one at you. Lanzelli red fastball, swung at fastball, was not a fastball. Curveball down and out of the zone. Both outs recorded by Jack Washburn have been strikeouts. One out to Robert Moore. That's a good pitch. One ball, one strike. So after back to back strikeouts, Moore gets walked. The battles. We've seen a lot of pitchers caught. When you threw a pitch that you didn't like, did you dance on the mound a little bit, spin a little bit? I'd take a lap every once in a while. I'm not much for dancing in any situation, so I, <laughs> I definitely didn't want to do it in front of 25,000 people. Jalen battles. It's high and it's one and oh. The O2 World Series with the Angels. Here watching his son pitch in his World Series. That one is just up. Battles maybe selling out on a 2 0 fastball right here. Talking about the defense, but there is some juice. 10 home runs on the season. Hmm. So back to back punch outs. A walk to Moore now behind 3 0. Oh. That's six straight balls. There you go. Three and one. That 0 2 Angels team, of course, beat the Giants, Bonds. Two pitchers from that series are here. Russ Ortiz also in town right. with Oklahoma. Three balls and a strike. That's a really good pitch. A little cutter at the end of it. And now he's worked his way back to a full count. Center field. It's got a little knuckle to it, but a good read by Justin Bench as he came in to catch that battle slide ball. Dad likes that his son was able to get out of it. To the bottom of the sixth, but that'll be it for Higgins Smith. Freshman left hander had this one going today, and he really had it going the entire time. Eight strikeouts today for Smith at one point. Struck out three in the third, three in the fourth, but everything on that slide. 
They've been in the bullpen a little bit over the last three weeks, a time that Arkansas needed a really good one, so the guy to his right might get a chance to pitch again. Well, the freshman did it today. Five innings, gave up just two hits. One was a solo home run, but he leaves with the lead and gives way to another lefty. Yeah, and a good one. We haven't seen Tiger yet either. He's been there closer, so you know he's looming out there. These are the big innings for Arkansas to Ole Miss because that guy has been so lights out at the end. There he is. The rest of just burst onto the scene as a closer for the Razorbacks. Hasn't pitched here in Omaha, and this may be that chance. Taylor will get Kevin Graham Kemp Alderman who's two for two with a home run. And then Peyton shots on yay so Graham will lead off it'll be left on left. 2 one ball game bottom six Arkansas wins will do it again tomorrow for the right to go play Oklahoma in the final. Another filthy slider from the lefty out of the pen. That's what he can do to you. Evan Taylor fastball slider almost exclusively and he's facing left handed hitters throws a slider more than he does the fastball. He will lean on it especially if he gets ahead. Four of the nine in this Ole Miss lineup from the left side and, and they're slugging about a hundred points less this year against lefties. There's a reason why Arkansas started that way and now stays that way. Kevin Graham swings through another slider. Ninth strikeout of the night for these Ole Miss hitters. Hagan Smith got him with this one. Then Evan Taylor comes in with a very similar approach. You got a righty here with Alderman. 11 home runs on the season. Two for two tonight. Wow. A lot of movement on that pitch from Taylor. That's four pitches, four sliders so far. And all strikes. Different angle also, a little bit lower. Son is no longer a factor in left field. 0-1. Beaten on the ground. Battles read the hop. Fires in the dirt. Nice oh, scoop by Stovall. Nice pick on Stovall right there. And again, we talk about timing, we talk about footwork, and knowing the runner getting down the line. Exactly what battle throw. Look at him work through the throw, Eddie. It's like it was almost like an outfielder that is running in to catch it, and then all their momentum's going to home plate when mm -hmm. they make it. It, it. That was almost the exact same thing for battles. And then we talk about four shortstops in this infield. Peyton Stovall picks him up again. He didn't pick it up in the web either. He caught that. The palm of that glove. Two down. Chatanier, the second baseman. One of the eight strikeout victims of Hagen Smith. He also grounded out to short. <laughs> Taylor, one of those guys that can add depth, take depth away from the breaker ball. That time, 1 0 count. Trying to throw it for a strike, takes some of some of the down out of it, flattens it out, and a take from Chatnier to even the count back at one on one. Laced in the left field, that one's going to get down. Giving chase is Gregory hitting first, going to second, and now he puts the brakes on as that was fired back in. Good job by Gregory to get it and throw it quick. Chatnier was thinking about two. This one more through that ball over to Stovall. The reaction of Michael Turner, the catcher, he was like, No, don't throw that. I'm not there to back up. Luckily, he did not throw it away. Aiden Dunhurst did not look good against Hagen Smith. And he has yet to get a hit here in the World Series. You're not going to see a fastball. Throws a slider over for strike one. Two outs against Dunhurst. Left on left. I don't think he sees a fastball this entire at bat. He doesn't look comfortable at the plate right now, Eddie. No, not at all. 
from that angle where it's coming from. Down with that too. Is way off on the first base side of the rubber. Oh, and two. Down. We're playing three and a half outfielders where Robert Moore is with his depth at second base. Five in a row here. I don't think he throws him a fastball. I think he keeps doing this. Now, if he gets to 3 2, maybe. Got him with that slider again. Man, a frustrating night for Dunhurst. Really good pitching. They have struck out 10 Ole Miss hitters. Evan Taylor picks up where Hagen Smith left off. Oklahoma two national championships. You mentioned some of the guys that were on that 1994 team. They did it in 1951. So John's got him back here going again in 2024. The Oklahoma Sooners soon to be in the SEC. A couple of years from now, but trying to win one for the conference they currently call home. They have been outstanding. 3 and 0. Oh. Play relaxed, have fun. It's worked so far. They're waiting for the outcome of this game. And then we may have another one tomorrow. Game one of the College World Series Finals are Saturday at 7 o'clock Eastern Time on ESPN. You're 3 and 0, oh, man. You're going to be well rested. Pitching is lined up. Boomer Sooners are feeling good. And they'd feel probably a lot better if Arkansas can force a game tomorrow. Brady Slavens now has the longest home run in this field's history. Dead central. Check to swing there. And a big home run at that because it put him ahead 2-1. Straight away center. Left on left. 16th home run of the season for Slavens who's ready on a 2-0. This one into left, dropping quickly. Two for two with a walk. And remember, it was Stovall who was hitting in the eighth spot. Slavin's in the two spot. Van Horn flipped him. Stovall had a historic night last night. And tonight, it's Slavin's who's getting the job done. What a perfect time right now just to be executing small ball. You have a one run one lead. You got Braden Webb on deck. Your leadoff hitter with the middle of the lineup coming in behind him. Zach Gregory so far 0 for 2. Let's see where he stands in the batter's box as he moves forward. Yeah. He's got nine sacrifices this year. He squares. That pitch is outside ball one. Two for 14 in Omaha. Zach Gregory. Garrett Wood right in on the grass and charging. Here he comes, and that ball too far away from him to make a catch. Too much barrel. You try to hit it off the end of the bat. That automatically deadens the butt. One will try again. That Ooh, pitch guys, is impossible. Guys. But not the greatest approach either from Gregory, too. I mean, it, he was almost pointing the end of the bat at the pitcher before that came in, and then you get the breaking ball that he bunts right through. I see that approach against that last pitch. If you're Washburn, I think you've got to throw it again. You really got to move up on the play, though. Especially with two strikes, if you get the bunt sign, you want to be and at least have that front foot in the front of the box. 
that right foot in the front of the box just to open up and give yourself more of an opportunity to keep it fair. You have to move forward towards the pitcher. Because at the end of the day, if you're going to square that early, you can move up in the box. It's usually a very good indicator that you're going to bunt. But if you're going to square that early, they already know, so who cares? Yeah, absolutely. He's doing it again on a 2 2. Popped it up, but it's down on the ground. They got a chance for two. They get just one. Field your position. Good read by Washburn. Tell you who should be proud of that is his old man, also a very good defender on the mound. Gets off the bump in a hurry. He sees it, squares up to second base, and throws a perfect strike over there. There he is. Right there with the sunglasses, back row. Looking a lot like our producer last year in the back bench. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. Everybody on the front bench tonight. Braden Webb's got a double. He's grounded out to short. And he's walked. Gregory's got six stolen bases. Looking to tack on to a 2-1 lead. Arkansas with a win forces another game tomorrow. The winner will go to the World Series Finals. Didn't miss by much. Ball one. Washburn not fast to the plate. Very deliberate. Zach Gregory six for six in stolen base attempts. Arkansas really has not been much of a running team this season. Mm. One ball, one strike. Bullpen game tonight. Hagen Smith outstanding for Arkansas. He's going to watch the conclusion of this one. So is Gattis. The next pitch similar and he gets the call. Wow. One ball, two strikes. You're going to get this one. You might as well just live there. That looks to be five to six inches off the outside part of the plate. But if, if, if that's the side that's going to give you a little bit more, I, I would not go away from it. One and two to Braden Webb. Oh, he got away with one. He hung it up there. Change up at 82, and he picks up the strikeout. But he took a lot off that curveball. Again, it works like a changeup just because it was 82. Out in front was Webb. As a hitter, that pitch looks so big. You get so anxious. Just can't stay back. Started the broadcast talking about this kid, Peyton Stovall. And it's nine hits at the World Series. Tonight, he is hitless with two strikeouts. Can't miss prospect. Turned down a ton of money. Decided to come to Arkansas. Slow start, but obviously enjoying the spotlight in this stage. Oh, oh good pitch. Knee high. Advantage, batter. Ball has managed to fall out of the stands in left field. Here's our, our beach ball etiquette. Right? Rav, I think you got to go out and teach it a quick lesson on this. In between innings, fine. Fire away. Middle of an inning, sit on it. Let's put them down. Yeah. 
or else it gets popped and then like that you can't do anything with it anymore. Game over. Again, this is a fun part <laughs> of the College World Series. Yeah, Shelly's out. Oh. oh, she said, what about my guy right here? And he's willing to give. I've seen a lot yeah. of that, man. A lot of that. The fun was catching it. 2-2, two -two, still ball foul. I don't know if you saw yesterday, Angels game. Yeah, I did. Great. How cool was that? Guy catches a home run, gives it to the kid. In front of him, and then the kid catches a home run. Really and gives the ball back to it. the gentleman behind him. That's pretty cool. I did not see that. Yeah, so a home run was hit to a, like row four. A young gentleman, probably 20-something, caught it, gave it to a kid in the front row. Then the home run was hit. The dad of the kid caught it, and the kid said, you take your ball back. I got I got a real one. <laughs> this one's better. This is a good one. Boy, boy, boy. Tough play. Stone ball retired. Jacob Gonzalez continues to play well. <laughs> Washburn pitches well. Never easy. Evan Taylor is still on the mound. Tigard. He's warming up in the bullpen. Yeah, so you got Calvin Harris is supposed to hit next, the left-hander. Ben Van Cleve, the right-hander, has a bat right now. I would think if you're Arkansas, leave Hagen Smith in. You wait until Van Cleve reports, and then if you're going to go to the Tiger, that's the time to do it. Bottom seven, Ole Miss down a run. Ball one to Wood. Right field and played perfect. Manzilli was in and he's there for the out. Well, Brady Tiger came into the game against Ole Miss April 30th. Arkansas was up 3 2 in the eighth. Ole Miss had the bases loaded. Tiger came in. He got the first batter and hit into a double play. And he struck out the next guy on three pitches. So there's experience against this team in a huge spot. And it Gets bigger here. He's ready. I'll tell you that. I mean, ideally, if you're Arkansas, you want to limit the, the amount of time that he's in there and potentially have a few left tomorrow if you get there. But obviously, first things first, you got to get to tomorrow first. Yep. Senior Ben Van Cleve. Didn't get it. Three ten average for Van Cleve at the knees. Called strike two. Good location there, keeping it down, forcing him to use those legs and go down and get it. Yep, he's gone, and that was quick work from Evan Taylor. Two down in the seventh. They've been pretty good since trying out that bullpen. You can see Van Cleve sitting slider right there. He's he's looking for looking for not that. Locked him up with the fastball. Pitching ninja approved right there, and Ole Miss will turn the lineup around right here. Justin Bench has reached once on a walk. On the ground, nice short hop fielded by Wallace. Great play by the third baseman. And Evan Taylor manages to get through the seventh without any issues. Tiger is looming. Oh, baby, I was born
for this year. This one to left, going back is Graham, still going back, looks up for get it off the top of the wall. It looked like it got over, and it did. Center field. With this little history, Brady Slavin has the longest home run at Charles Schwab Field. We moved this event down here in 2011 after Rosenblatt for so long, and that's the longest one, 436 feet. Pitching has been tremendous. Ole Miss only three hits. Jim McCants has gone in to play right field as a defensive replacement. Arkansas would love to add a run or more here in the top of the eighth inning. Big part of the lineup, Caden Wallace. Washburn sails slider away. One ball, one strike. The beach ball right field. Did not listen to KP. Come on now. Straight, straight for you. Got like two and a half minutes in between innings. Do it then. Don't do it now. No, you. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Yes, he did. He did. Sure did offer it. That, that's a strike on Wallace. Don't like it on 1-1. One, one. First pitch, okay. Now you fall behind 1-2. He can hit it out of sight, too. Yeah. Good take. Looked like a strike for about 45 feet, and then it just disappeared. And we go 3-2 to the leadoff hitter here in the eighth inning. Anybody's ball game, 2-1. Next one to Wallace. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, right through Wood at third base. And heading to second base. <laughs> Safe, the call is at second, Wallace. And of course, Fender said, let's take a look at that. That was a much closer play. Wood with a really good throw. This thing ate him up. Oh, yeah, it did eat him up. Any line drive that it's hit hard at third base. And I've been part of this. It's not that it knuckles. This ball hit his heel. But it, it crossed his feet. His legs. He's out. At second. No, he's not. I got the I'm hand in there, Eddie. With you. you got the hand in there? I think he's huh? safe. Hand? I yeah. got it let's in. Let's check it out. Hand. Ooh, wow, that's close. Right. That is really close. I think the first look, the first look that we showed, I thought the hand just got there first. Is it? Is it? Is it? Freeze. There now. Yeah. That from, that angle, from that angle right there, it did not touch the fingers on the way to the arm, right? No. Yeah, I, I like safe. where your head's at. I think it's okay. That's his safe. Did it brush it? That's the big question from the other There's angle. There's no brushing. No brushing. I think he's safe. I think he's out. I, this I is great because both that. fan bases are watching it on that big right field screen. And did both, it touch the fingers? Both if it fan touches bases. the fingers, he's out. If, if what, it did not touch the fingers what, on the way in. glove does? Right. I didn't Watch think it did. the finger right here. Did it? No? I don't think it did. He's Hard to tell right there. Did, right it, did there. it knock that finger? That's it. He's out on that angle. All right. Eduardo says out. KP safe. This but. is a huge call, by the way. Lead off man. Up a run. Eighth inning. One thing I'm not going to forget also is Wood got, I mean, pretzeled over there at third yeah. base with that line drive. That was a screamer. They're taking their time, Eddie. They're seeing if we had some brush going on or not. That was 105 miles per hour off the bat. It's pretty good work by Chatney too. I mean, the body was set up exactly the way that you wanted to, to get that tag there as quickly as he possibly could. And Ooh, I think the safe. hand does move. He's safe. I, I think the fingers move. Second, I'm Carl, siding with it. I changed. What's is, that hand? This is a good one. That, that finger go down? No, I'm sorry. Kyle says I, no. I'm I love where we're at. He texted me at home you. saying that he was safe. I disagree. I think you're both wrong again. 
It's happened many times. It has. And maybe the call on the field is what is going to be decided on. It could not. Our replay officials, though, are giving it its due diligence because, again, this is an enormous. This is huge. Enormous call. Nobody out. And should the call be an error on third baseman right there? Because there was no bad bounce. No, I, don't, I don't think so. You think it's an error? Uh, just on the shoe? E10? What, size 10? I, I, I mean. No, no, no. That ball is scalded. <laughs> there's no way that you scalded. give him an error. No. You this don't give him an error. Longest and review we've had because there must be some angles. And you guys owe me an apology. <laughs> Did Chotnia get his hands down? We're going to know in about five seconds. Hold me an apology. Here we go. After further review, the call of safe stands. Huh. Huh. Wow. Huge call. Wallace to second base. Was it call stands? Is that what he said? Yeah. That's why. So they couldn't tell from Don't any of the angles. Pedal now? I'm not backpedaling. I'm just saying call stands. Call stands. Because the call on the field is, if he would have been called out on the field, it would have stood as out. Jack Doherty's going to come on to pitch right now for the Rebs. Caden Wallace, his 20th double of the season. No error on Wood. And in a game of inches, that was even less. That's a huge run out there at second base with nobody out in the eighth. Sights and sounds, some of the images. Got the drone working over the mighty Miz. The NCAA Men's College World Series presented by Capital One. The Bob will be lit up shortly. Fast moving game because the pitching has been great. And uh, Eddie has been just really Upset about just the idea that you can just say stands instead of coming up confirmed. with a decision. I'm okay if they say confirmed. Stands right now, this late in oh, the game. I think that let I think his hand moves. The index finger on that right hand looks like it. I didn't see it. It doesn't matter. Rate, it it doesn't matter. What it's it's a great debate, and it's not that you know one way or another. It's just a great debate. Now it's up to Jack Doherty, Kyle. Yeah, 52 strikeouts and 37 innings for Doherty, and, and it is primarily fastballs. He'll show you about 75% fastballs can get into the low 90s. We've seen guys that have come in here that usually live in the low 90s that have been 94, 95 in this environment. What do you do with Turner and that big run out there at second base? <laughs> did you see that from I did. Turner? That was beautiful. Yep. Inside move to second base just to see if Turner shows bunt. So well after it was done, <laughs> Turner just spins and shows bunt. <laughs> he clearly was not going to do it. But. In his career, one sacrifice hit. And none this year. So the oh. fastball pitcher immediately starts off with an off-speed pitch at 77. It's amazing, man. They're wow. up by a run. You don't get a lot of runners in scoring position when you hit the ball over the wall. They've done that twice. First time they've been in this position. They need Turner to get Wallace to third. And this one is off the glove of Gonzalez, and that's going to allow Wallace to score. And a fist pump at first base from Michael Turner. A huge, huge insurance run. Jacob Gonzalez, right man, he tried to keep that in the infield, Eddie. Yeah, and that's what you're supposed to do, dive, keep it in the infield. Unfortunately, for Ole Miss, it hits right off the top of his glove. And once it hits his glove, he ends up being able to score. It hits off hit his, his back right arm. arm. Yeah, hit his he back dove arm. over it. He, he actually dove past it. I've but never it, seen that. Yeah, he, he dove over the top of it, and Caden Wallace was not going to score. No, he if, was if he doesn't touch this ball that goes to left, Nate Thompson at third base is going to hold him. Instead, it goes off the right arm of Jacob Gonzalez, the shortstop. Wallace doesn't break stride, keeps going. Hogs at another one. Single runs now in the second, fifth, and the eighth. 
Think about the bizarre nature of the last two balls that have been hit. Garrett Wood just got eaten up by that ball off Wallace's bat, something you don't see very often at all. And then a shortstop dives over the ball. Arkansas has a huge third run. And there's a really good bunt. Wood bare hands. He's got no play, and he left third base open. Momentum is all with the Hogs right now. And this is the same guy that went deep early in this game. A strong guy is playing back. Lenzilli sees it perfectly executed. Worst case scenario, you would have a runner at second. He's all smiles. You think foul ball base hit. Arkansas playing a little small ball here. And they didn't ask Turner to do it. They do ask Lanzilli, who hasn't been asked a lot to do that. He's he done that on his own. That's on his yeah, own. I, I think he saw where Garrett Wood, the third baseman, was, and, and he was back and pushed a little bit more to the shortstop side. And remember, Garrett Wood had not started a game in his collegiate career until about two weeks ago. So if, if you want to force somebody into an uncomfortable defensive position, that's probably it. He is animated right now and again that may have to do with the way that the team has been playing but those two balls we've seen this inning now three a line shot that Garrett Wood couldn't make a play on a ground ball to Gonzalez that because he dove over it allowed the run to score. It's a little sometimes you need the little hey wake man. up call. Let the anchor play for Skip Burton. And Skip Burton was a master at knowing when to when to come out and give you a hug and when to jump you. And right there, he had to go out and say a little something to everybody. And then at the end, if you saw, give a little it was love. well, he did, but yeah. it was a reminder of if they bunt, here's what we're going to do. So you got to go out and jump them. Great, get it out of the way, wake everybody up, but then remind them, okay, we got a guy coming to the plate that's probably going to bunt, and here's how we want to defend it. Turner's at second, Lanzilli's at first, Robert Moore at the plate, already squared. First baseman crashes, ball one. I'd let him slash, man. There is so much real estate if he comes back and slashes. I get it, but fundamentally, we talked about Robert Moore the entire time. Now look at the way he is at the plate, and when he's going to bunt, watch where his right foot lands. Moves up in the box. Perfectly executed right there. The position, the bat stays where it has to be, gives him more of an opportunity to keep that ball fair. And it opens up the lane towards third base where he has to bunt it here with runners at first and second. Been a great day for Moore. He won a gold glove the best defensive second baseman in all of college baseball. And now with nobody out huge opportunity for the Hogs. Oh, Beautiful bunt. Wood to first. They will get more second and third one down. Robert Moore fundamentally as good as there is on a high fastball but I want you to watch where his eyes are and watch where the barrel is because they're in a very similar position so even this though this ball is elevated he's going to set the angle early the angles already set look at his eyes he is directly behind a baseball and what has to move are the feet watch the legs it's not the hands the hands always stay right there it's the legs they go down they go up that's your rudder you go up and down with it. They will intentionally walk Jalen Battles. The bases will be loaded. And Brady Slavins, who already has a homer tonight, steps up. That homer was to dead center. It's the longest home run hit in this ballpark. And whatever, there's a rally caps, rally cans, whatever it takes, they got a huge chance to just blow this open with one down. Bases are drunk, that's what they are. That's this what they is, do at Bob. This is really interesting. You walk the right handed hitter to face Slavens, who's been swinging the bat very well tonight. Oh, Balls inside. 
Turner, third base. Lanzilli, second base. Battles, first base. Started on a Caden Wallace double. He came in as Turner sent one to shortstop off of Gonzalez. Ruled a hit. Lanzilli with a single. Moore with a great sacrifice. Battles intentionally walked. 0 2 to Slavens. Got him. Big strikeout for Jack Doherty. Know your personnel. No one knows him better than the head coaches. End up walking the battles, the right-handed hitter, go after Slavin's up and in fastball, the ability to throw glove side there twice in that at-bat, three pitches. Buenos dias, buenas tardes, y buenas noches. Kendall Diggs is going to be a pinch hitter for Arkansas. He will hit for Zach Gregory. So it was Kendall Diggs that had the walk-off home run against Ole Miss at Baum earlier this year. He doesn't have a lot of ABs this year, but there is a lot of juice. Dunhurst tried to steal that one. Let it travel like he's had as long as he can. High 2 and 0 to Diggs. Only the 26th game he's played. He only has 59 at bats, but he does have three home runs. And in the driver's seat now with the bases loaded. Arkansas wins. We'll play again tomorrow for the right to move on to the World Series finals against Oklahoma. Two balls and a strike right down Broadway. He was taken all the way. Yeah, he had to have been. He bins it up at two and two. Arkansas appears ready to bring their freshman Tigard in to maybe get six outs. He's got a two run cushion right now. Jack Doherty on the mound, digs at the plate. To back punches of Slavens and Diggs, and they will leave them loaded. They do add a run, but wow, was that impressive. Jack Doherty needed it. They still got six outs to play with. They're down by two. Arkansas needs to win tonight. Emotions are running high. Energy in Omaha, solid. Another postcard night, temperatures down. We had 100 plus like so many in this country earlier this week, but things have changed. We get a little rain moving in tomorrow night. That's why the NCAA and the Men's College World Series, if there is a game tomorrow, they have moved it up. It'll be during the day, but we got to get there first. Ole Miss needs some runs. They do not bring Tigard and they let Taylor start this inning. And the first pitch in there, strike one at Jacob Gonzalez. If he gets Gonzalez, I think Taylor may, they may try to let Taylor finish this inning because you go left, right, left. Gonzalez, Elko, Graham. Moore oh, playing boy. real deep, has to charge, and he knew it, man. He had that clock working. He starts in shallow right field and just charges to get Gonzalez. 
Oh, there's a big risk when you play so deep and you know that there's a lot of speed at the plate. See him playing in short right. He has to come in, hustle, beat Gonzalez, not only to the bag, but to the ball first. Gets there and has to go in one motion, throw a strike over to first base. Strike one to Elko. They've kept him in check. Pitching tonight for Arkansas has been outstanding. Three hits to Ole Miss. Elko struck out. Popped out to right. First at bat, he walked. One and one. Baseball Ruffin has gone into play left field. Zach Gregory out. Pinch hit for the last time up. Taylor working on a 1 1 to the seats. Elko 23 homers, Graham more than 10, Alderman 10, Chatagne 11. Two balls, two strikes, and he got him. Nasty pitch. Elko retired. Two big outs from Evan Taylor. Coming up next on SportsCenter SVP Aces Swingers Wednesday edition. Post game reaction, Game Four, of the Stanley Cup Final. So the question about the golf and the future of it lives irrational threat to golf. Sports Center, we're done here in Omaha on ESPN and the ESPN app. Brooks Kepka, the latest to move over to Live Golf. I think I saw today where they're going to allow the Live Golf guys to play the British Open this year as well. I think I saw that on the bottom line. Kepka, Florida State. Hello. Oh, that's nice. They know there's a huge game going on here, though. Well, he's going so fast. He's trying to get home so he can watch the end. Battles, and how about the job that Taylor just did? On and relief. Wu Pig Sui are three outs away from a rematch tomorrow night. Three runs, eight hits, no errors, Arkansas. One run, three hits, no errors, Ole Miss. A must-win game for the Razorbacks, and right now, they are in a good spot. And the relief pitching, Taylor has been outstanding. Jack Doherty got two huge strikeouts with the bases loaded in the last half. It will be at the top of the order, Webb, Stovall, Wallace. Ground, Gonzalez. Good throw. One down. Oh, it's a little early, but you want to look ahead, Kyle, so you get Nolan go for got ace, ace. Ace, two aces, which for Oklahoma is exactly what they wanted. Yeah, this this could not be, at least up to this point, working out any better for the Sooners. You're going to go, if things hold, you'll go ace, ace tomorrow. Connor Nolan for Arkansas, Dylan DeLucia for Ole Miss. And you should have two bullpens that are in a pretty good spot, too. And again, the game tomorrow, if there is one, 4 o'clock Eastern time, ESPN 2. Hard hit, stayed up in the air, and it's in the glove of Gonzalez, and there are two down. It's going to feel just like a Friday night at Bomb or a Friday night no at doubt. Swayze. You got ace against ace. Winner goes on to the College World Series finals, and for both of these teams, Looking for their first ever national championship. Two pitches, two down. Wallace started off the eighth inning with a hustle double. He came around to score the third run of the game. How about the Oklahoma program? Ah! You win the national championship in softball. 
You are, you're yeah. two wins away. It's never been done. Never been both in the same year. That's a good pitch. It's been all night a strike. It's 0 and 2. I think given that half to full ball off the plate. Alderman, Chatagnier, Dunhurst are due up for Ole Miss in the bottom of the ninth. Will not offer one and two. Megan Smith started for the Hogs. He picked up eight strikeouts at one point. Eight outs in a row were courtesy of Smith's strikeouts. The bullpen has been locked down since. 2-2 two -two to Wallace. Yeah. He got him. 93. Gaddis was really good. darty has been terrific. Bottom of the ninth. Ole Miss needs two. We are back, and so is Evan Taylor. He's on the mound. Tigard has thrown a ton of pitches in the bullpen. If they don't need them, it's just another weapon that they could use tomorrow night, and they will not need them if Taylor can continue to navigate through this lineup. Alderman, Chatagnier, Dunhurst. Right field, wouldn't you know it, leadoff single. For Kemp Alderman, his third hit of the game. Time to go get him. Time run at the plate right now. That's what he was hoping for. Taylor should be done. Evan Taylor was terrific. Should get a huge round of applause from the Arkansas fans here tonight. And Dave Van Horn has signaled for the freshman Brady Tiger. He's coming in, a lot of weight on his shoulders. He's been up to it all season long, but no bigger spot than this. Now three plus tonight for Evan Taylor, who did his job out of the bullpen, four punch outs, gets Kevin Graham swinging, Dunner swinging, Van Cleve kind of swinging, and then Tim Elko swinging. Pretty good night for the left-hander. They leave him out there, and, and the question will be, did they push him a little bit too long? Lead-off single by Alderman, and now, now you get to this cat. It was really good stuff. Brady Tiger, the freshman closer, fastball into the mid-90s, and a wipeout curveball. Throws the curveball more than he does the fastball, but generally, that's because he gets ahead. If you're all Miss, if you can get into plus counts, you won't see the curveball as much, and you don't really want to see the curveball if you're all Miss. Eight saves for the freshman, and he first experienced the College World Series when he was 13 years old. He was here with his dad, Josh Tiger, and said, I can't wait till I play here. And dad said, I, I hear you. I'm looking forward to it, too. It didn't feel real, but here we are six years later. Brady Tiger has come full circle, now standing on the mound that he stared down on as a 13-year-old. Chance to get his team into a winner-take-all game go, tomorrow. Go, go, Infield defense shifts with Moore on the shortstop side for Peyton Chatagnier. Is the tying run at the plate. He's got 11 homers on the season. Singled his last time up. That's too far outside. Behind 2 and 0 is Tiger. Shot. He's got to be leaning 2 0 fastball. 
He's not that big, but there is some juice here for Shatton. He had 11 home runs on the year. Arkansas was in a similar situation last night. A ground ball up the middle. Battles took it himself for a double play. Try to hold up. Instead, that ball ate him up, and it's two and one. Chatagne from the right side of the plate. A little Tommy Ichiro setup. The bat pointed up. The Black Magic. Right here. Mm-hmm. Watch out. That one got him. He didn't have to move very much. He let it go, and it's two on. Winning run to the plate. Nobody out. Bottom nine. Zach Morris, the left-hander, and, and I'd say, well, to get you closer in the ball game. Why are you going double bar double barrel action down the bullpen? Dunhurst from the left side. Garrett Wood technically uh, is on deck, but Hayden Leatherwood has grabbed the bat. It was a left-handed hitter. And then T.J. McCants now into the game from the left side. Again, you can go back to that game, April 30th. Tiger came on against Ole Miss. Bases were loaded. Nobody was out. He got out of that mess with a double play and a strikeout. He got two on now. Dunhurst is 0 for 9 in Omaha. That one, did that get him to? Yeah. It hit him too, and now the bases are loaded. Back to back hit batters. It is just a brutal situation here with the bases loaded, nobody out. And Hayden Leatherwood, the pinch hitter, coming up. And to the mound, that's it. A. Van Horn has already signaled for the lefty to come in. He's not going to allow Tigard to finish it. Zach Morris, it's your ball game. Ole Miss down two, bases loaded. They win, they'll get Oklahoma in the finals. Arkansas holding on for dear life. Back in the bottom of the ninth. Set the table because the eighth inning was a big one. Wallace came up, hit this shot. Wood couldn't field it. He went after it. Wallace went to second on a close play, as close as you can get. Wallace was called safe. He stayed at second. He later came in on a ground ball that Gonzalez couldn't handle. Gonzalez doesn't touch it. There's a good chance Wallace stays there, but that was the big third run. But now as we zoom in on Charles Schwab Field, bases are loaded with Rebels. And Morris trying to redeem himself against Ole Miss. Remember, it was just a few days ago that Zach Morris Zach Morris got the start against this team, and ultimately it was just his second start of the year. That start didn't go very well. Lasted just two-thirds of an inning. He didn't have anywhere to put him right here. The lefty comes in, bases loaded, nobody out to face Hayden Leatherwood, who on the season is 5 for 31 against left-handers with a home run. Alderman at third base. Chatagnier, the tying run, is at second. Dunhurst would be the winning run. Hayden Leatherwood, left on left. One ball, no strikes. They'll be playing double play depth up the middle, conceding the run. Ground ball has hit the third base. 
Wallace should be going home with it. What a spot for Leatherwood. Two balls, no strikes. 3-1 game, Arkansas. They need to win. If Ole Miss wins, we got our World Series final. You saw Alderman, they're shot in you, and there's Dunhurst at first base. We talked earlier in the series about breathing. Do not forget to slow the game down. Have to be able, as a player, as a pitcher, slow the game down. Morris set on the 2-0 to Leatherwood. That's in there for a strike, 2-1. and one. World Series. Ole Miss trying to rally in the bottom of the ninth. And Morris set to go. From 2-0 to 2-2. He missed his spot by a foot and a half, and it doesn't matter. They're trying to go fastball on the outside black. It leaked on him, went fastball on the inside part of the plate. Tied up Leatherwood right there as T.J. McCants looks on. Leatherwood after falling behind 2-0 Morris picks up the punch out all right so outcome obvious right there with the strikeout but it was a little bit different way to get there break the ball in the dirt so it's 1-0 now fastball that's really not close 2-0 bases loaded nobody were no nowhere to put him go fastball miss with a fastball but get back to two and it just lets it go it's exactly where Turner wanted it his catcher set up away had that glove up Leatherwood can't do anything with it Giant strikeout right there from Morris. Now a hard ground ball at somebody potentially gets you out of this thing. McCants hits one in a gap. Ole Miss is playing for the national title. First at bat for McCants. And that's one of those where he's looking at himself and saying, oh, I like that pitch. The infield defense has been outstanding for Arkansas. That's down, a ball and a strike. Six three, two twenty five. Zach Morris trying to force a game tomorrow against the same Rebels. One and one. Good pitch. He's ahead one and two. Justin Bench, the leadoff hitter, on deck. He's reached once. That was with a walk. Otherwise, hitless in his other three plate appearances. there battles ran right into him and he uh, held on to it Jace Borofen with a big play that's a great play and concentration by Borofen this ball's all his battles has to know where he's at he's playing more up the middle he's going full out for this baseball he's calling it but this ball belongs to the left fielder Borofen Stays with it. What focus, and he's able to keep the runners exactly where they were. The bases are still loaded. Two outs for Justin Bench. Man, oh man, oh man. That could have been big. 
Amber Borfin didn't start this game. He came in later on. Zach Gregory started the game in left field. And even though Battles was calling, a Borfin can call him off. Arkansas fortunate it ends up that way. Now a pitch away from getting out of this. I'd be careful with this first bit, this first pitch. Bench can jump on a fastball. Three homers. 39 RBIs for Bench. First pitch, ground ball in the hole. Battles has it. No play. They get one. And now it's 3-2. Smart play by Battles to eat it. Keep it in the infield. That's all you can do right there with Battles, the veteran. Putting that one in his back pocket. Left on left. This is the guy you wanted to play, though. Jacob Gonzalez, he's going to put the ball in play. He struck out 30 times this year. He already has one strikeout so far. But a very good eye. Twice as many walks as strikeouts coming into the College World Series. Chartier is the tying run at third base. Dunhurst the winning run at second base. Gonzalez 0 for 3 with a walk. That's big because Gonzalez will force you to throw strikes. Rarely chases out of the zone. Again, Moore is about 30 feet into shallow right field. And Gonzalez has very good speed. Look at that, a slow roller past the pitcher. That's better, one ball, one strike. That's down, two balls and a strike. Remember that third run. Off the glove of Gonzalez. Allowed Caden Wallace to score. He's got a chance here to redeem himself. He dove over the baseball at shortstop. This is where the patience of Gonzalez pays off. 48 walks, 30 strikeouts this year. He's just waiting for something over the plate. Good pitch. We're even at two and two. Morris blew it by him. 91. Throw it again. Don't try to trick him with a slider. That fastball's been working. We saw it already against Leatherwood and McCants. I agree, but against Gonzalez, if I'm going to throw the fastball, I would prefer it in. Arkansas left the bases loaded in the eighth. They're loaded right now with Rebels. 2-2. Two -two. Into left field. It's elevated and caught, and that will do it. We will play again tomorrow afternoon. What a job by Zach Morris as he picks up the freshman Tiger. And it forces a winner-take-all game to get into the finals tomorrow. Arkansas 3, Ole Miss 2. Best game we've had at this 2022 World Series. How about the redemption? Right there by that man on the mound. Amen. Amen. I mean, they, they rolled the dice the other day when they rolled Zach Morris out there in the starting roll, just his second start of the year. More comfortable in this spot, but he came in and the house was on fire. He put the fire out. We'll see each other again tomorrow night. With the two aces likely on the mound, Nolan and DeLucia. It's the way it should be with these two teams. Arkansas avoids any more headaches in Omaha for a night.